Hello everyone and welcome back to Imperium Galactic Survival Reforged Eden Atlantis. My name is Rakuna. And yes, we are back at base and as you can see there are some ships destroyed. Uh, because I kind of quit and exited the game just after I defeated them. But anyways, yeah, it's going to be time to show you what happened. I found IDA's satellite and extracted her core. Yep, I have IDA with me right now. Inactive. She's not able to speak. And alas, it gives me a moment's peace and silence. But uh, sadly, that peace is going to be uh, over quite soon. So first of all, let's show you what happened. Hello, Commander. We meet face to face at last. Eesh. Well, I guess you've seen better days. A Xyrax destroyer, the one I told you of earlier, has arrived in orbit and has launched a pair of interceptors. They are targeting this satellite, Commander. I need your help, Commander. I need you to remove the system locks and remove my AI core, then insert it into Communication Relay 451's computer core. Tell me what to do. The access code to the system lock on my core is 1912. A self-destruct will initiate if the locks are removed, but I can pause the self-destruct timer until I have been disconnected. When the interceptors arrive, there will hopefully be nothing left. 1912, you say? Alright, let's go and remove IDA. I hope you realize I'm trusting you with my entire existence, Commander. As long as I'm disconnected from a live system, I will be shut down, effectively dead. If you were to drop me, I would fall eternally into oblivion. Please don't do that. The Xyrax interceptors will be here soon. It'd be better to get it over with now, Commander. IDA? Yes, Rakuna? Thank you for everything. Remove the core. Good night, Commander. Remember, don't drop me, mother- Eh, let's put IDA in my backpack. I'm on my own now. The satellite self-destruct sequence should reactivate now that IDA isn't pausing it. I've got to get back to Relay 451 before the interceptors catch up to me. Oh, poop. Gotta get back to the relay before they catch up with me. Or... Let's take care of these bastards. Oh yeah, space battle! Hey, where are you going? Get back over here. You wanted to start this? Yeah, it, it's gonna happen whether you like it or not. So will you stop moving around? Stay put. Come on, come on. Just stop moving a little bit. You know what? I'm gonna go after your friend instead. Well, yeah. Yeah, the vision is not ideal in this, but it's not that bad. It's good for aiming. All right, there's the other one. No way I'm going to let these guys run after me all this time. Ew. All right, time for a little reload. Yeah, stay there. Stay there. St keep not moving. There you go. That's one of them down. Where's the other one? Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop trying to scurry away. There you are, you little bugger. I got you right in my sights. Yeah, keep going straight. Keep going straight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Go. Spinny, spinny. And l let's see what you have on you, my friend. Ugh. Basic crap. All of this for that? Totally not worth it. And that's about it. I kicked both of those drones butt. Exited the game and came back in here, and uh, they, they appeared in here, attacked my base. I mean, at least the defenses were not put there in vain. They have been useful now, and probably the only time where I will have used them. Anywho, let's go back into Morningstar. Let's bring IDA back to Relay 451. Oops, I dropped her. Uh, let, let me pick her back up. So off we go. Well, that is funny, because I have, well, defeated... The Interceptor is uh, not only once, but twice. And where the hell are the troops that uh, I was promised? Uh, the protection from the Polaris Kennex 62 station? Nowhere to be found. Uh-uh. They didn't come to my rescue whatsoever. I'm going to have to have a word with the chief about that. Looks like I'm home free. Just hold on a little longer, IDA. It's not like she can really hear me. <laughs> Damn it, I gotta stop dropping her. IDA, what are the codes for the relay doors? All right, uh, yeah, should still be saved in my PDA. All right, let's go for a quick landing, soft landing to be exact. Uh, what were the codes again? Maybe the other door is still open. I don't want to look in my PDA. Ah, there you go. Hells yes. Let's go inside and uh, let's put IDA down in this uh, computer core. Let's do this. Okay, the AI core just slots right into this port, right? 
Holy shit, I had no idea I depended on IDA so much to explain this crap to me. This looks like the right place the core would fit. IDA's round and the hole is round. Oof, am I fat shaming IDA? Insert DII core into the central port. Oh, please don't explode, please don't explode, please don't explode. Loading new intelligence profile. Uninstalling Sigma receptor. Warning system intrusion detected. Initializing antibody response. Warning system integrity at 80%. Harmful intelligence detected. Attempting to quarantine. Warning quarantine failed. Tracing system intrusion. Warning, tracing external source fail. Warning, remove external device. Warning, remove external device. Polcom AI, operator non-responsive. Polcom AI, connecting to Sigma. Polcom AI, no response from Sigma. Warning, Sigma receptor not found. Polcom AI, operator 83765466, help me. Polcom AI, operator 83765466, help me. Polcom AI, operator 83765466, Warning, system integrity at 30%. Warning, remove external device. 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 System integrity at 0%. Rebooting system. Initializing IDA intelligence profile. Overriding Polcom protocols. Setup complete. Opening external connections. Running hello world.ida. IDA, are you there? Polcom AI, why didn't you help me? Warning, intruder detected. Activating self destruct sequence. Self destructing in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Set humor to 75% IDA. Humor setting now at 75%, Commander. I am here. Are you gonna be alright now, IDA? Yes, Commander. This communications relay is superior to the surveillance satellite I was integrated into. I have remote access to the Polaris communications network with the same permissions as the rudimentary Polcom AI. Was another AI in this calm relay? I thought that was just a program. Yes, Commander. The Polcom AI was a rudimentary submind of the general purpose communications AI. It is present in all communications relays and satellites, but could not achieve true sentience due to programming blocks. Something about it worries me, though. And what's the problem? I had intended to take control of the antibody system and quarantine Pulsic AI and analyze it. However, when the AI realized my goal was to take control of the relay, it attempted to contact an external intelligence. An entity known as Sigma responded. But I had already uninstalled the receptors for it to connect through. Whatever Sigma is, it is far beyond anything I am capable of defending against. I have cut all external incoming connections from outside this system until I'm sure it's no longer watching. What do you think Sigma is? I don't know. Sigma, for me, kind of sounds like something sticky. I do not know. Some form of decentralized strategic class artificial intelligence would be my guess, Commander. A military AI designed to control, coordinate and manage systems on a galactic scale. Are you in any danger from it right now? No, Commander. I am filtering incoming transmissions from outside the system and have resumed normal operations of this comm relay. For all intents and purposes this relay is performing as normal with no observable suspicious activity from the outside. If I hadn't taken precautions however, you would be having this conversion with a very different AI. I'm just glad it's you IDA. As am I commander, I am also glad you did not drop my core, again, as this comm relay is now fully functional again. Comms Chief Mason is currently trying to message you, Commander. Oh, thanks a lot, IDA. Hey, kid. You still alive over there? I've been messaging you for five minutes. It looks like you got Relay 451 working better than it was before. Yeah, I'm all finished here. Heading back to the station now. I hope you've got my paycheck ready for me, Mason. Who bloody well told you my name? Ah, oh, well, forget it. Keep it to yourself and get back here, kiddo. You did good today. I'll give you that. Oh yeah, job well done. Let's go back to the ship and let's fly back to Connect Station. And uh, yeah, Rick, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you don't need to do any more fast forwarding animation. I know I've been a little demanding on the last episode and asked it like four or five times. You could just like skip over there or, or make like a, some sort of a cool warp animation or just, just something fancy. Yeah, put the shizzles to the nizzles. You know what I mean, Rick, just do it.
here we are back at Kennex Station. Let's turn back in Urshar. And Kennex comms chief, requesting permission to dock. You don't need to ask for permission to dock, kid. I've already cleared a bay for you to land. Okay, okay. Don't be so freaking moody. So let's land the ship right over here. And let's just get out of here. Let's go see the uh, comms chief, dude. Sugar my bob. And uh, yeah, tur turn your ship off. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, don't need to have it on. ID, uh, do you have access to Connect Station system now that you've integrated into the comm relay? Not full access as that would draw attention from Sigma, but I can observe most active data in the station. I also have full access to the observation equipment on all Polaris satellites in the system and soon, the entire quadrant, Commander. I will add the relevant details of my new systems to your PDA when you're done meeting with comms chief Mason. Okily dokily IDA, let's do this. So let's go back over here. And by the way, I think we're gonna go talk to our dear OK Medical dude. Welcome to OK Medical Care. I'm Dr. Sewell, and I'm licensed to offer you medicines and injectors compatible with Terran physiology. How may I help you today? Just looking for supplies, dude. I'll take all of these. The more, the better. I want to have all these health packs available to me. All right, let's go and meet up with uh, Comms Chief Mason. Oh, Comms Chief! There you are, kid. You did a bloody good job out there. Not only did you fight off a bunch of pirates, you fixed the broken relays at no cost with a boost in efficiency on top. If you want a full-time job instead of contract work, you come to me. I'll set you up with top paying comm work throughout the system. Thanks, Chief. I appreciate it, but I have a job already. Or do I? Hey, you know, good pay and all that. I, I could just end the mission right here. Rakuna. Nah, let's do it. Ah, oh, that's too bad. I was looking forward to a competent worker for once. Well, you know where to find me if you change your mind. I'll suppose you want your pay. I've got it right here with a couple of bonuses on top for the initial maintenance job. A bonus for dealing with those pirates and another bonus for fixing the damn thing afterwards without incurring any repair costs. That last one netted me a big bonus too since I saved the company tens of thousands in Tronics. Maybe you should give me that uh, those tens of thousands as well. We've had trouble with corruption from some of our managers, so I've got cash. That's fine with you, right? I can authorize a transfer, but I don't want Paulsek sniffing up my ass looking for a dodgy payout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cash is fine. Alright, here's your pay, Rakuna. Make sure you count it and confirm it's all there for the security recordings. Payment received. 40,000 credits. Well, job's done. You know where to find me if you're looking for a permanent job. Now go, get, chew, be gone! Thanks, Chief. You helped me out too. My friend will uh, get to live another day thanks to you. I guess you've got people depending on you too. You're all right, kid. You too, I, I think. Chapter 5, Afuro Graves. The loss of IDA was narrowly avoided with the transfer of her core into a Polaris communications relay that grants her access to the system's communication and surveillance system. Avoiding the scrutiny of Sigma, you've managed to gain access to tactical scans of a massive crash ship on the nearby moon. Within the torn and sundered remains of the lost ship lies another potential clue to the location of the remaining UCH fleet from a source independent of Polaris. Proceed! Eddie, I'm seeing some strange readouts on my heads-up display. Is that you doing something, or should I be worried? It's nothing to worry about, Commander. I am in the middle of updating your suit's drivers with the latest Polaris security protocols. You will see minor improvements to your display, radar, and tracking. Now that you have access to that uh, comm satellite IDA, can you access the logs of where the ship that took the flea survivors? We're still stuck for clues, and I'd hate to just head off into space looking for them. No, Commander. Those files are still sealed in an external Polsic server, which I am unable to access while Sigma is still watching network traffic in this system. It's only a matter of time before something else attracts its attention though. All we have to do is wait patiently. In the meantime, I have diverted local network data through Relay 451 and filtered out many relevant transmissions. This includes a number of Polaris contracts that were intended for someone else if you're interested. Among the transmissions I decoded was a comm frequency hidden in the metadata of the relay's final transmission. It seems it is from the person responsible for the attack on Relay 451 and is intended for you. I have added the comm frequency to your PDA. Great, so now we're dealing with pirates. I'd like to avoid pissing in the local laws enforcement pool as if at all possible, IDA. Surely that's not everything you find while snooping through people's mail. 
I prefer the term monitoring rather than snooping commander. As it happens, there is another matter that I though was best left for last, as it is in another precarious position, I was able to retrieve surveillance images of several planets and moons in this system, the most relevant of which show the remains of a large ship on the far side of the moon. Extrapolating for the images, I can determine that the crashed ship is the UCH-002MS Titan, the flagship of the fleet. If there are any logs as to where the remaining ships in the fleet were able to escape to, they would be on the MS Titan. Even if there aren't any logs, it should still contain combat data that may be of use in determining the number of survivors. Looks like we have another chance to find the trail of the UCH fleet. Hopefully this one will pay off, so that we don't need to rely on Polaris hospitality. Set course for the planet's moon, IDA. And get me a bag of Doritos. So we got a lead. Let's uh, not go and do that just yet. I have other business to attend to. So first things first, I'm going to set trail back to our base, which is a little while away. Where's the moon anyways? Probably on the other freaking side of this galaxy. It's all the way over there. Yeah, okay. We'll be able to get there afterwards. Right now, I want to do a little bit of work on the Morning Star. There's also the missions with the pirates I would like to do. And the reason why I'd like to do some missions with the pirates is because on Atlantis, we have a couple of pirate traders. The only thing is we don't have the reputation to deal with them. So if I do them and get myself a good reputation, I could see what these guys are offering. Maybe some goodies. Maybe it's worth it. As long as the missions don't impact my reputation with the Polaris or the traders, it should be okay. And of course, eventually I'll have to do a little bit more work on the base there. Kind of expand a little bit. Uh, just a teensy wince. I got some ideas, it's just I gotta take the time to actually apply them. So, the ship is docked, and what I want to do is remove these things and actually put a shield in here. So, let's connect to the sh base. Let's salvage these uh, little parts over here. Not too much there, I don't want to destroy anything. And we could probably add some uh, tier 2, tier 3. Right now it currently has a basic CPU, so we're going to have to make some tier 3. And with all the missions that we've done, all the instances, we picked up a whole lot of electronic bridges and matrices. So yeah, make me two of these. And maybe for the rest I need to unlock s some things. Or I'm just missing some plastic. Really? I'm missing some carbon substrate. I do have the rocks and I think I need to collect some more plant fibers. Yeah, some more logs. So first things first, let's grab the termite and let's go out for a little spin. Yeah, all of these missions, uh, like you might have noticed that the last episode is a little shorter than the other ones. All the typing and all the fast writing and the fast text that appears sometimes in the, the Reforge Eden scenario, you don't, you don't have time to read. So I gotta retake all these lines and re-say it and put them all in and same thing for the Com Chief and for IDA that has all to be typed down and uh, yeah, it's just... It's just a lot of work, and, and I give myself that work, so, you know, I don't have to, I, I'm not supposed to complain about it, but I, I just wanted you guys to realize that it is a lot of work just to uh, kind of put the voice actors in and try to make this series a little bit more lively, a little bit more interesting by actually having you guys not need to read what is under. Okie dokie, so the wood has been collected, uh, 50% wood should be more than enough. Must be around 300 logs or something. That should be more than enough to do what I need to do. Well, let's slap that over there and let's keep working. Anyways, I know this thing takes a lot of time to uh, just produce the <laughs> CPU extenders. So, Pentaxid tank and the light shield generator. I don't know, can we go with the other one? Or do I just need to upgrade it afterwards? I, I think you need to upgrade it. And I believe since we have the CPU, maybe it would be time to add in a little bit more, you know, boom boom. Or kabooms or whatever. A laser, plasma. Plasma are good. I should I should go plasma, I think. What are you sicken? I can't make wait, this is a large constructor. First of all, let me turn on the light. Can I upgrade this? If I connect to this, can I can I upgrade it? Uh, apparently I need a whole lot of things there. I don't have currently in the yeah, in there. Are you still here? Oh yes, don't mind me, I'm still waiting. Who are you waiting for? I don't feel comfortable talking to you about it, but I'm sure he'll be here soon. He? So it's a dude you're waiting for. Oh, 
he, she, I'm, I'm not sure personally. But I know I'm supposed to wait here. Who told you that, a little bird? Why don't you tell me more? Why don't you tell me any more information than that? Uh, it's mostly because it's none of your concern. If I came here to meet you, I would have met you by now. But you're not the one I'm here to meet, so I'm just waiting. All right, dude. I, I got a plasma blaster, okay? I'm gonna shoot it right in your freaking face if you don't tell me who you're waiting for. I dare you. Oh, really? You won't do it. I'm inside your base. If you fire this thing off, you'll probably blow up some of your equipment at the same time. Jesus Christ, you're aggravating. Oh my God. How's this thing going? Okay, still gotta wait. So, nighttime. And the asshole is still there. He's still there. He's just gonna be there forever. It's worse than waiting at the freaking hospital. This guy has the patient of a god. Anywho, uh, now that this is done, I'm gonna make the components that I need to actually be able to uh, upgrade this. And while that is busy, let's go inside of the Morning Star and actually uh, put the stuff in there. Yeah, come on, come on, land in there. All right, one tier three over here, one tier three over there. Let's close these panels. And this should give me a little bit more CPU to play with. Oh yeah, 25,000, I'm currently using 12. So yeah, let's apply our Fantastic Tank right smack over here. In our shield generator. Oh, jeez. I don't see how it is right now. Okay, like this. And, 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 and. What? Why won't it place itself? Why? Is there an invisible block in there or something? Oh, it's because it's the wrong way. God darn it. Stupid, stupid raccoona. There you go. Slappity do right in there. And can we upgrade this? What? No upgrade exists. Must be unlocked in tech tree first. Haha. <laughs> Stupid. All right, needed high output capacitors and two power coils. Fine, I'll do that. Yep, this is still taking a lot of time, but we should have our components ready soon. Then we'll be able to upgrade this and also upgrade the shield on the ship. In the meantime, let's send as much as we can, uh, pentaxic wise, to the Morning Star. Great, now we can upgrade this as well. Uh, how's the base CPU doing? All right, we're still just under the CPU. We're good. But that means I should be able to make my plasma cannons. Yes. Reduces a little bit of the shield capacity, but not by a whole lot. So let's build four plasma cannons. And let's sleep the night so all this stuff can be done. Now with this, we can upgrade our shields. We could upgrade it again, except we need a whole lot of components. What is our CPU at, like, right now? Okay, we got, like, 10,000 to play with. And if I want, I could add probably some more CPU up there as well. So let's remove a couple of these antennas. These ones like these. And let's place the plasma blasters on there. Sweet. And now I got more room for more weaponry. The only thing is I brought our CPU up to 21,000. Let's get the paint color right over there. <laughs> it just kind of feels wrong. If I leave these things as uh, white or gray. Same thing with uh, these components over here. Now, for that we need to type A plasma cells. And uh, why don't we have oxygen in this? I'm not exactly sure why, but first of all, let's start by activating our shields. And let's go check our water generators. Are the shields doing their thing? Yeah. And the generators are going at it very nicely. 20-ish percent for uh, during the shield recharge, which is quite reasonable. So let's check these little buggers. Oh, that's sweet. And luckily with my super suit, I can pick all of these up, no problem. <laughs> there you go, 10,000 capacity just in my suit. I got plenty of room for more. Yeah, jetpacks. Jetpacks are useful. I wonder if having these things on me, if it impacts like the ship's weight. I, I can't say. So I can make some type A plasma cell. The only thing is that uses uh, elemental potassium and carbon substrate and a restroom gel, which is quite expensive, but I believe I'll make some nonetheless. Let's make a couple. And of course, we're going to need to refill the 15 mil ammunition as well. And during all this time, I haven't eaten. I haven't eaten. This armor is just amazing when it comes for the uh, for the food consumption rate. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add also some uh, guided missile launch. 
When we have to face some of these pesky drones, it is always good to have some. But two should be enough. And we don't have any Promethium pellets. Well, you know what, guys? I know exactly where to find myself some Promethium. So, let's grab the burrow. I know that in space we did find ourselves a Promethium asteroid. And this little puppy should make short work of it. And there she is, right ahead. Our Promethium asteroid, ripe for the taking. And let's see how well the burrow goes versus this asteroid. Oh yeah, eat up buddy, eat up. I mean, it's not gonna be as quick and efficient as if I was using a, a CV laser drill on it. <laughs> but you know, for beginning, it's pretty good. All right, I don't want to dig too deep, nor do I want to get too greedy in awakening something in the depth of that asteroid. Yeah, I got quite a little bit, and it's not like I needed to make some actual fuel for the ships. This is only for weapons and ammunition. So, let's head back to base and let's start making ourselves our rockets. So, just a little question like that. How, how do you guys like the ships and the color theme? Because, you know, a, a lot of people won't dig the whole purple and pink thing, but I think it looks quite nice. You know, usually I'm not a pink guy myself, you know, personally, but on the ship, use like as a thruster or use very lightly on uh, some of the glowies mixed with the purple. I think it does like a, a pretty good color balance. Well, that's just my personal opinion. Why are you still on? Okay, it wasn't on, it's just the lights were on for some reason. I, I don't know. Anywho, let's send the Prometheum and uh, everything that we grab. Let's go ahead and make ourselves some rockets. And apparently you guys are not done with the rest of the stuff. Alright, let's make some rockets and, uh, you know, let's sleep. Yeah, good thing my missions aren't really urgent. <laughs> so, let's grab the rocket launchers. And let's transfer the ammunition. Jesus Christ, I made a lot of bullets. Oh well, not complaining. And we got 300 rockets to go along with it, which almost fills up the box. So let's remove this and that. And let's slap those rocket launchers on there. There you go. Oh, this ship is starting to get pretty fully armed. I think this should be quite nice in battle. All right, let's lift off. Are you having trouble lifting off? Maybe it doesn't like all the weight that it's carrying, but uh, you know, going forward though, it does get to maximum speed or I thought it would. It's going at 45 meters per second. <laughs> maybe a little uh, thruster upgrade, or maybe it's just that I put way too much ammunition in my uh, my ship. Who knows? So if I'm looking over here, the closest moon is Haven Moon. So let's start making slowly our way over there. All right, I've reached the moon IDA. Where to now? Transmitting the location of the Titan's crash sites to your display, Commander. Crash site? There's more than one? There's no atmosphere here to slow a falling ship, so I hope you won't have me scouring the regolith for a dozen pieces of unrecognizable wreckage. It would be hard to spot small pieces of the wreckage from a satellite commander. The Titan has broken into three large sections, but they are quite close to a large Xyrax complex. Exercise caution when approaching. Well, well, well. Did you say Xyrax outposts? Yeah, I see that we got some, uh, some other ruins here. And a couple of, uh, yeah, minigun drones. Hey, wait a second. I thought I reloaded you. What is this? Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I know. Good, good good aim, buddy. I can't see anything. <laughs> Not with you shooting in my face like that. All right. Let's take the sucker down. Ha! Stupid drone. I mean, there are a couple of runes. I could go ahead and check that. And I did discover some aluminum. Crash transport wreck. Okay. I know this isn't the main mission, but, uh, you know, I, I do tend to squirrel a little bit once in a while. This planet is full of uh, pentaxid and other components. So you got the natural knickknacks. That's all good. And that's it? That's, that's all there is to this? Okay, so yeah, just a couple of components that I could probably just uh, salvage the crap out of if I ever needed, like, some beginning components. Let's not bother with that. 
Now we got some titanium deposits. Uh, I, I see that I'm picking up a whole lot of radar signatures around here. And uh, I'm picking up some red signals over there. Huh. I'm kind of curious. Let's go see what that is all about. Oh, the communications array. Yes, I know exactly what this is all about. And this thing is emitting some sort of a constant EMP or some sort of a pulse, which uh, could damage my ship if I'm not mistaken. I know that the, you know, the temptation to the squirrel is very strong, but I, I gotta try and focus and find my uh, UCH buddies. And everything got really dark. All right, IDA approaching the front section of the Crash Titan. I have eyes on the forward section of the Titan IDA. Considering the speed it would have hit the ground, the damage isn't that as bad as I expected. Right, let's approach the mid part now. Ooh, okay. Obstacle. I can see right into the midsection's hangar IDA. Looks like it broke apart before it hit the ground, which is probably the only thing that saved it from being flattened by the rear section. Yeah, we got that over there. That's all three sections confirm, IDA. I'm heading to the forward section to see if there's anything left of the warp field generator. That thing is our only ticket home. Be careful, Commander. The wreckage appears to be unstable and may collapse with minimal prompting. It's called structural integrity, IDA. I don't think anything will fall apart in there. All right, let's put a little uh, soft landing over here. Let's leave the ship running, you know? And uh, yeah, let's turn the flashlight on. Uh, it's kind of dark in there. I've reached an entry point into the wreckage IDA. It looks like this leads through the cruise quarter towards a warp field generator near the bell. Anything to say about that idea? No? Oh, energy bar. Great. All right, I'm gonna leave the milk there. It's probably sour, and disgusting by now. Full of lumps. Disgusting, disgusting lumps. So let's move towards the warp field generator. Yep, a little forward over here. If I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I could just like, boom, salvage, boom, salvage. IDA, I'm looking at the warp field generator. What's left of it, at least? It's not good. The warp core housing and some fragments of the heat sinks are all that's left. There should be a console in the engineering section with the operational logs of the warp drive, which should shine a light on what happened, Commander. Alrighty, then. Let's go in there. No, that's not the one I need to check. It's over there, engineering section. Actually, when I need to go back there, I can just use my super powerful jetpack. <laughs> I found a console IDA. It appears to be intact, but uh, it's got no power. No surprise there. Looks like the power's cut out completely. The reserves must be drained too. I'll have to run the cable from my suit's power supply to the console, like I did back in the Heidelberg. UCH 002 MS Titan War Control Board charging. Battery status less than 1%. Warning. Charging error. Remaining power 0 minutes, 0 seconds. Keyboard active. I don't like the looks of that warning. Console logged in as technician 15, Penbarb Ray. Unable to connect to local server. No input. Enter query. Uh, system logs. UCH 002 MS Titan War Control Board. Retrieving log. Logs incomplete. Read logs now. Upload to the external device. I'm uploading the warp drive logs to you, IDA. I don't feel like reading a technical data readout that won't make a lick of sense to me. I'm no warp technician. I know how to use a warp drive, but I don't have the slightest clue how one works. Well, I'm glad you think highly of my skills, Commander. What makes you think I know how one works either? I am a strategic class AI, not a fleet class AI. I am not authorized to access or manage the technical systems of a UCH warp field generator. So then there's nothing either of us can do with this console? Not necessarily, Commander. I can read the technician's logs and time-stamped events and collate them into report. The specifications of the warp field generator, however, are locked behind several layers of programming blocks in my code. Whatever you can manage, uh, IDA. Use your mojo. Use your magic. Do your thing. It will take some time, Commander. I will forward the report to your PDA for you to read at your leisure. I'll disconnect the power label, and if you actually think I'm gonna read this, you're out of your mind. Son of a... I knew that power warning was bad. The console just zapped me when I pulled out my cord. I'm sorry to hear that, Commander. However... It did reveal the chief engineer's console on the port side of the engineering section. I have highlighted its location on your heads-up display. Yes, ma'am. Sometimes I wonder who the commander is around here. So, yeah, that's 
what I was talking about just earlier. I could just jetpack my way up there with this super duper invincible jetpack power. Wee! <laughs> I can see it now. It's on the upper level and looks like there's still some juice in the battery of this one. Probably woke up when the other console surged. Let's get, let's go around there. I don't want to fall. Unauthorized exit. Insert valid UCH personal keycard into the card reader to proceed. Looks like there's power, but the system seems to be locked. There's a slot here for a keycard, but it looks like I've lucked out. It's empty. Of course, it couldn't be that simple. IDA, is there anything you can do? No, Commander. That console has been disabled until a valid personnel keycard is inserted into the card reader. You may be able to find a keycard in one of the crew's quarters, but it's unlikely that any crew member would have left his keycard in his room. Is there maybe something else I can slip into the keycard reader, right? Yeah? Rakuna, this is entirely inappropriate and immature. Believe me, whatever this console needs, you can't offer. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, so you can make jokes, but not I can't. Okay, you suck. The Titan carried a crew complement of 168 crew members, Commander. One of them may have left their keycard in their room. Good luck. Thanks, IDA. I'm going to look through 168 goddamn passengers for a freaking keycard. You're out of your freaking mind. You know that, right? Ugh. All right. Beds. Beds. Ooh. Uh, submachine gun. No thanks. What? Find a keycard in one of the engineering staff quarters, IDA. Looks like I'd be able to access that console after all. I mean, I don't know how I... Ugh, you know what? Never mind. Never freaking mind. Ugh, don't ask any questions. Okay, I'm back at the console with the ID card, IDA. Time for the moment of truth. If that card is valid, it is a serious breach of UCH protocol. Remember to make a note of the card's identification code, Commander. I have trouble remembering my own freaking Polaris code. What, you think I'm gonna remember this one? Ugh. Reading card data. User authorized. Welcome back. Technician 42. J. Harper. No connection to server. Resume audio log. Play personal logs. Time. That thing. ID. Lieutenant Jack H. Tech 49. Final audio log. Coolies are fused and the heat sinks panel are starting to fracture. The emergency cooling system is overloaded and outer hull is starting to buckle from the temperature difference. We've almost lost two engineers. When a thruster on the lower deck burned out, the propellant lines vaporized them both. The warp's core damn well got super critical and there ain't nothing anyone can do to stop it. The chief's gone inside to drive housing to eject it before it blows the ship in half and has ordered the rest of us to the hangar and off the ship. The bastards know there's no coming back from there. It's a one-way trip. Hell, it's a war zone outside. The ship and knowing my luck, the transport will be the one to get hit. I might as well stay and make sure the core gets purged or else it won't matter for those poor bastards on the transports. Sorry, Melissa. It doesn't look like I'll be making it back. I love you. End of audio log. He gave his life to make sure everyone else could escape. Yes, Commander. I have finished compiling the Warp Drive's technical report and it seems that Lieutenant Jack Harper and Commander Alex Lamar stayed behind to ensure that the overloaded Warp core was ejected and the rest of the drive was sabotaged. They did not survive. Alex. He was in a few of my classes in the Fleet Academy. We both took the Lieutenant's exam together. He was going for Chief Engineer while I was going into security. Looks like we both got what we wanted. Have you found anything else on this console, IDA? Nothing of relevance, Commander. I can confirm from the records that most of the crew in the forward section evacuated to the hangar and boarded transports to leave the ship in the middle of combat after the ship had been disabled. I guess that's our next stop then. According to the reports, the crew of the Titan evacuated from the ship using their transport ships in a Titan's hangar. They could have a course set in the flight computers on the deck if any are left. Marking the hangar section of the MS Titan on your display. It's unlikely that anyone would have filed a flight plan while the ship was under fire, Commander. Noted, IDA. We won't know until we look. So, let's go to the middle part. But guys, I believe that is all the time that we have for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to nudge that little like button, and I'll see you next time. So until then, take care and stay safe. Rakuna out.